Ooh, we got some exciting information for you all. The graphics card market is going to get a heck of a lot more exciting in the coming months than it's been in a good while. NVIDIA's next gen 1100 series, or whatever they end up calling them cards, will most likely make an appearance at Computex early next month, as far as probably an announcement, I'm speculating, and we're looking forward to seeing what AMD's Navi architecture has up its sleeve come next year. But while all of those cards will offer major performance upgrades over current gen tech, and we do mean major if recent leaked GTX 1180 specs are to be believed, Taiwanese manufacturer TSMC has recently announced something that might be able to push next next gen cards a whole lot further so the new tech is called wafer on wafer or wow for short and it's all about sandwiches unlike the edible kind though with bread and whatever you want to put in the middle definitely not mustard mustard is the worst invention known to culinary history these sandwiches the ones of you know silicon wafers are stacked on top of each other and they're connected by some stuff delicious so that's probably a terrible way of explaining it so let, let's try that again. Essentially, TSMC's WoW, or World of Warcraft, is a 3D stacking technology similar to that seen in modern SSDs like Samsung's 3D NAND flash devices. It's similar in that silicon chips are stacked vertically rather than peppered across a board. So like you have, it's like this instead of like this. You, you get what I'm trying to say. So according to Cadence, which jointly announced the tech with TSMC, each wafer is aligned to be a mirror image of the other. And then after they're mirrored, they are joined bonding layer to bonding layer. In order for this configuration to work, there are two confusing and silly sounding techniques that come into play. The first is through silicon via TSV, and it basically refers to one of the chips being pierced with in and out connections. The second is flip chip technology, which is exactly what it sounds like. The chip with the TSVs is flipped in order to connect with the other. And while the focus here is on connecting two chips to each other in a way that they can work together almost seamlessly, Cadence explains that it's possible to stack even more chips on top of each other using these methods. There's a lot to take in there and that's still an extremely simplified explanation. Fortunately, all we really need to know is that using the technology, chips other than memory could be stacked vertically on top of each other. Doing so would drastically reduce the real estate needed for the chips and should result in much faster communication between the wafers. And while TSMC hasn't really touched on the application of the technology for GPUs. They are currently producing cards for Nvidia and AMD, so you know there's that. We wouldn't be too shocked if somewhere in the future cards equipped with two stack GPUs started hitting the market, offering double the performance of similar cards with just one GPU on there. But as is often the case with newer tech, this one doesn't come without its shared of concerns. One of these centers around yields. Uh, yields meaning how many can you produce and still make it profitable to make, which is one of the reasons why we don't have 10 nanometer from Intel is because they're not hitting the yields that they need to. They're throwing out way more than they can afford to if they actually want to sell profitable mainstream consumer chips. So because the WoW process relies on two chips working together as one, if one chip turns out to be bad, both have to be thrown out. So you basically over double your chances of having a failure rate. It's basically going like grade zero. If one of your things dies, everything's gone. So Cadence, that company that released the information with TSMC, they explained that for the tech to be viable, quote, yields need to be high enough to make the savings from working at the wafer level cover the fact that some good dye are going to be sacrificed because if you have a good dye on top and a bad dye on the bottom, you have a broken relationship and everything's gone. And because yields are higher on more mature processes like 10 or 16 nanometer, we probably won't see it being implemented with newer GPUs right away, especially because Navi is supposed to be seven nanometer and Vega Refresh is also seven nanometer. So those are processes that are just starting to hit the market. And that's one of the reasons why we're not getting a seven nanometer refresh of Vega to the consumer desktop is because they're using it as a testing phase to get everything right for Navi. So th this is like multiple layers of technology testing that they don't want to squish together because 
yeah, you, you would just screw everything up. So instead, we're more likely to see the tech being used for something like a Pascal refresh or Polaris refresh plus plus, or, you know, seven nanometer down the line, like a Navi version two. Another important issue to take into account is cooling. Just one high performance GPU is a difficult thing to keep running cool. So two stuck right on top of each other could be a freaking nightmare. Of course, there are lower powered chips that run much cooler than say, you know, a 1080 Ti or an ARGS Vega high-end card. And those would pose less of a challenge, but still, cooling will likely be a major concern if this technology does start appearing in graphics cards, at least at first. And this is a sentiment shared by the good old gamer in his video on the topic, where he goes into slightly more detail about the possible cooling issues inherent to the WoW tech. And while it's unlikely we'll see graphics cards with WoW tech anytime soon, it's a really exciting prospect. It's basically Crossfire or SLI, only not ridiculously stupid, crappy, or buggy. If the technology was in a user usable in perfect state right now and cooling wasn't an issue, 4K 60 FPS at max settings would probably wouldn't be nearly as hard to hit. <sighs> Just imagining a car with two 1080 Ti chips working together makes me feel all warm and cozy. It's nice. But let's also not confuse the fact that this die stacking technology is not the same thing that AMD has reportedly been working on with their Navi architecture where they're gonna have something akin to the affinity fabric working side by side. So the way that they would do that would be actually horizontally. And so potentially we could get four times the speed because it would be the die stacking on top of each other and then the cross talk between the infinity fabric lanes between the two GPU dies. We could get an RX Vega 256 level performance, my friends. That's what we could be seeing. It, it's NVIDIA who's stuck behind without the lack of, you know, infinity fabric and they only know how to stack things vertically. Well, AMD can potentially do both. Obviously, this is all new technology and whether or not they're going to be able to combine that is all here to say and just not something that we have the information on. This was one of the things that also plagued CPU technology for a while was the fact that we weren't sure that we would be able even with just the die shrinks and the, the process shrinks that we would continue to be able to get better performance out of everything. But then when, you know, Intel announced that they have their tri-gate architecture, which actually builds things vertically and not just horizontally, you can get some extra performance out of a similarly spec uh, process. It could potentially be that we would see companies like Nvidia and AMD give us two separate lines of graphics cards that we could see. One that actually has the multi-die GPU enabled, but then we also have another one that is on the leading process because if you want to enable the multi-die, you want things that have better yields and the better yields are the ones that they've been producing for a while. So getting a, you know, a Pascal graphics card, let's say a 1060, something that they very much know how to produce at this point, they've refined the process and you get two of those stacked right on top of each other. That's basically GTX 1080 level performance, but then if you get the cost down to the point where you can sell it at the same price, that's a very compelling thing, but then you have, you know, your Turing architecture, which is selling, I mean, what's it rumored to be 12 nanometers? You have your Turing architecture on 12 nanometers. You have your Pascal double stack layered sandwich on 16 nanometers. You get to have your cake, you get to eat it too. You get Pascal and Turing in the same generation. NVIDIA is kind of breaking the mold with how they're supposedly going to be launching everything because Volta, they're, they're going to be splitting their high-end tiered cards for AI and cloud computing against their, you know, normal consumer graphics cards in a way that they haven't really done before. Whereas like all of the Quadros and Titans were based on the exact same architecture. But now it looks like Volta is just going to stay. This is for the Titan. This is for the, you know, cloud computing. All of our Quadros, all of our Teslas are going to be Volta, but then we're gonna have a Turing architecture. And who's to say that they couldn't even just break the mold even further and just be like, screw y'all, we're giving you Pascal version two. And that's, you get three different architectures that you have to make, keep sense of all at the same time because that's just how we're going to work things from now on. Who knows? That could be the way NVIDIA wants to take these things. I don't know. You don't know. This is all speculation at this point, but it's fresh, new, exciting tech that is exciting to talk about. And it, I think it warrants the discussion. And part of this entire set of series is to just bring the information to you guys, but then also open up the dialogue of what you think, what I think, and hopefully we can have some sort of conversation surrounding that. I understand it's a little weird because, you know, I'm speaking to a camera and you're typing a comment, but I read every comment. I, I, I literally read 
every single comment. And in my mind, this is a complete conversation. And the things I say, sometimes they're wrong. Like people on the last video was like, it wasn't a dye change. You, they just put it on a larger substrate, you idiot. And I was like, you know, you're right. I misspoke. Thank you for, for telling me. Anyways, wrap it up there. Let's have a conversation down in the comments below or in the community discord. Let's chat there. Be sure to smash the like button if you enjoyed this. If you like this kind of style of video, or if you don't, just hit it anyways, because it helps us out. Also, if you're gonna be buying graphics cards, new, used, old, brand new, you can use our affiliate codes, which are in the video description, helps us out a lot. You could also be sure to uh, follow me on Twitch for live streams, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. Come hang out over there. Also, we have a Patreon if you guys wanna support us over there. Again, links are in the video description. Any way that you wanna support the UFD Tech channel, let me know, let me know down in the comments, use the links, all that good stuff. Anyways, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.